what's up guys it is Dusty Tucker I apologize that I'm not consistently keeping up with my videos I've just been so busy at work I haven't really had time to be pumping these videos out and this is more of a hobby right now YouTube is more of a hobby to me than it is it whatever it is to most other people that actually get money from it so I just kind of do videos for fun and when I can do them I do them this video today is going to be on the uh, 1873 Cattleman by you, Birdie. It's a beautiful uh, replica of the uh, Colt, 73 Colt. Now, this model, I don't know if all of them have it, but this one actually has one, two, three, four hammer positions four cocks, cocking sounds. So it's more to the actual cult than uh, perhaps some of the newer ones only have the two or three cocking position. Um, this one is chambered in 357. I kind of wish I got them in 45 cult, but there's a reason behind it. <laughs> this one's in 357 and all my firearms are unloaded. When they're in the house but uh yeah it's a it's an awesome shooter i think i deserve to be able to make a video a personal opinion review on the 1873 cattleman this is just the this some some of you guys might call this the cheaper model because it's all black there's no fanciness to this one at all the only color case hardening on it at all is on the hammer some now the, the newer ones have this on the frame some of them even have a little brass uh, plate on the bottom and whatnot brass uh, back strap and stuff like that but I honestly I actually like the black all black it's nice and uh, I've had this this particular pistol for going on five six years now and I've shot it Numerous and numerous and numerous times, but this thing is mainly just shot lead, lead bullets, my own cast bullets. So this guy is the five and a half inch barrel. Um, it's a, it's a good shooter. I actually really like this revolver. Um, I haven't had too many issues with it. There's a little bit of holster wear. This one's. A lot older than my other one um, a little bit of uh, messed up screws you know when you're an amateur it's hard not to, to to mess up guns and screws and whatnot so a couple years ago I ended up getting just a, uh, a cheaper hollow ground screwdriver set and they actually sell these at Cabela's now. Cabela's is actually stepping up their game. I'm actually getting getting impressed with uh, with their performance lately. They've been getting a lot of accessories. This kit comes with, uh, I think it's 40 pieces. A hollow ground set. Definitely worth buying if you have a lot of firearms or a lot of vintage firearms and you want to keep them in really good shape. Get yourself a set of hollow ground screwdriver set or kit. Um... Okay, so I guess this would be like a, a tabletop sort of review plus a little bit of a history behind me and this revolver. I um, I was watching a TV show seven or eight years ago. I think it was seven, eight, seven years ago. I don't know. I can't remember when Hell on Wheels came out. I think it was like 2011 or 12, maybe 13. I can't remember exactly when it came out, but Hell on Wheels aired. I watched it. I wanted a single action revolver. And I didn't really know anything about them because I had just gotten my restricted license the year before. So I went to, I think, this. it was in Lloyd Minister, Alberta. I bought at Magnum Guns, which is not there anymore. I bought this guy for 700 bucks. I think it was 700 plus tax. So I think they go, they're more than that now. They're like 
they're in the 850s now they've definitely gone up in price but uh this is an older model the serial number is i mean it's it's not huge but it's 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 up there anyway the the reason why it's a 357 and not the 45 colt was i i once again i did not know very much about revolvers or anything firearm related because I was fairly new to the firearm uh, community at that time when I um, when I first purchased it I wanted I wasn't reloading at the time either so you got to keep that in mind too I wanted something that I could shoot that wasn't expensive so there was the 45 Colt there was the 357 and after a little bit of research, I realized you could fire 38 special out of the 45 long Colt. 45 Colt, whatever. Um, I think I said that wrong. What? I'll just I'll just repeat that. You can shoot 38 special out of the 357, and it would be cheaper than shooting 45 Colt. And only being able to shoot 45 Colt. You might be able to shoot Schofield out, but good luck trying to find that ammunition, especially in Canada. Uh, but yeah, so that's why I bought the 357. So this was my first revolver that I ever bought. And then some five, six years down the road, somebody's. Uh, I started noticing videos that, mainly on Instagram, but I had no idea what single action shooting was i had no idea that it was such a thing i knew that there was three gunning but i was okay well it doesn't work in canada because we can only have five round magazine rifles and we can only have we're very limited 10 round magazine pistols so i mean it would be kind of dumb going into a three gun match in canada unless you want to reload like a son of a bitch so I was kind of thrown away from that. Plus you have shotgun buffer tubes that stick out three quarters of a mile. It's not very, I don't know. I just think the whole three gunning thing is kind of meh, whatever. It doesn't really interest me at all. But when I seen the single action shooting society, it's actually been around for quite a while. I had no idea. I just moved to this town. I didn't really know anybody. I'm the only person that, does this now out of all my friends no one really likes to do it i don't know um so anyways i was like okay well if i want to get into this i need to find a lever action pistol carbine and i need to find another revolver and i said well you know hall this is six years old now am i going to be able to find another one of these i had to have no idea i might have to go the good and the bad. I was thinking maybe I'd have to get a chromed out one with like pearl grips or something. Maybe have a good and bad. But I went to a gun show probably a year and a half ago now. And I found... <laughs> I found another one. You have no, Some of you might not be excited. You're like, oh, big whoop, whatever. You have a matching set. Good for you. you some of you guys are shooting single actions and you got two decked out chrome like just to the nines okay well this is there's a few things first of all cowboys were never really that rich they didn't have unless you were like a crazy bounty hunter that always brought back the bounty and never died uh it's more so hollywood glorified or country music cowboy when you got fancy guns and fancy this and fancy that i honestly i'm just standard this is the way i like to go standard 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 now there's a little bit of difference between the two um after i purchased it i noticed that this is actually an older model when i brought it home i uh, i noticed that it was an older model i looked at the serial number and I actually laughed. I was like, this one is actually older than this one. <laughs> I was kind of confused. How did this guy have that for so long? Unfired, mind you. This was unfired when I purchased it. How did he have it for so long? 
and it was an older model than this one, and I've had this one for six years. Crazy. It just blew my mind. Anyways, there was hardly any difference. Uh, the difference I found was actually that uh, you, Birdie, when I bought this one, their quality was kind of eh. Wasn't that good. I had to do a lot of stuff to this thing to make it work really good. Well, I wouldn't say a lot, but I had to kind of home out the cylinders because there was a lot of burring left in there. I took it to the range. I shot um, 357. I wanted to wear it in good, so I bought 357 Hornadies, some intense rounds. Shot them off, and then I noticed that when I went to try to eject the casings, the casings wouldn't come out all the way. And so I'd have to kind of force them out. And then I noticed on the casings that they were all scratched up. So I thought to myself, those, those cylinders are probably burred. They probably weren't smoothed out from the factory. So that's what I did. I took them. I buffed them. Well, sorry. I, I deburred them. I just took a uh, steel brush with a drill. And then just homed them out about 20 times each. And then I took a bunch of patches with... I just used oil. I just buffed the shit out of them with oil. And then I went to the range and tried again. No problem. They just they actually just slid out of the cylinder without even having to use the... For the first couple shots anyway. Um, that was one difference. Another one. I don't know if you'll be able to see this on camera. But... Um, Let's see you can see that the front sight the front sight blade there is pointy I'll bring this end in you can see the it's got a point to it come on focus on the damn sight you camera yeah it's not gonna focus but you can see that the front sight blade there it has a point to it it's, it's tapered it goes to a point that was the fresh one, the newer one that I bought. Now this one, it's a square, which kind of messes with me a little bit. And then also the back, the back sight, if you want to call it that, but it is also square. And then you have the back sight on this guy, which is actually a V groove. You can see it up top here, the V and the point. Now. Because of that on its own, I find myself more accurate already with the V-cut tail, whatever you want to call it, pointy fin groove on it. I find myself more accurate with this one. However, the difference in shear springs is ridiculous. The, this is an aftermarket shear spring. Um, this is my older one. I've This is the one I've had for six years. After, I want to say... 500 rounds, 38 and 357. After 500 rounds, the shear spring finally broke. And I guess, whatever, some of you are like, only 500. Anyways, the shear spring's underneath. It's actually what you hear that sound is the shear spring. That's all shear spring. So um, it went, and it sounded more like this one. It was more clunky and rugged. It was, it was more clunky and rugged. That's the stock shear spring. Um, I went to Brownells and I found replacement shear springs. Um, there's a lot of different styles of replacement shear springs. If I knew how to video edit better, I'd show you guys on a separate little box picture or something. But let's see if I can uh, find the one I'm trying to talk to you. Of course, it's not in this kit. Anyways, uh, it, it has like a little circle and it's connected. It's all one kind of piece. There's some that you can buy that are just the back. And I wish I had like the diagrams to show you guys. But I found one that was exactly the same as the stock, but it was made out of a better material. And I think it was actually a definitely a better material. And in that, what happened then is... A nice smooth I didn't, I didn't realize who would have thought a shear spring can make such a nice hammer pull like just 
so smooth. Like, beautiful. And then you go to the stock one and it's just... You probably can't really tell from the camera. But I can feel it, definitely. Definitely a more choppy, like, gringy kind of spring. Anyway, rambling on. They both shoot good, but those are the only differences that I really notice is that front, front blade, the front sight. Older one is square. Newer one has a point and a, a V groove into the frame instead of a square groove. Really, that's the only difference besides the serial number, which is obvious. Um, they're both the exact same barrel length. They're both the same caliber. Both have the same grips. Like, how awesome is that? Now I got a set. That's my set. That's my cowboy action shooting set. Th those are my go-tos. I have backups in case they go, which I hope they don't, because I really love these revolvers. <laughs> Had them for quite a while now. They actually have... <laughs> I don't, you probably won't be able to see it, but it has um, it has wear on on the side of the frame just from me drawing like this and sweeping up. Because when I draw, that's how I draw. I come up like this, and I, <laughs> it actually has wear on that part of the frame where I do that. The new one is it's still fresh. It would also be on the left side, right? Because I'm double strong, but. Anyways, uh, if you guys are considering getting the 1873 Cattleman, um, I know that U-Birdie's, um, or U-Birdie, U-Birdie, I don't know how it's pronounced, but they make, their, their stuff that they're making is getting better and better and better. As it go, as they become more famous and more popular, they're getting, they're getting a lot better at making their, uh, their stuff out. Oh, there's another thing. Um, the older one, this guy. I also had a problem with this screw. Now this screw would like to come loose <laughs> a lot. Let's say you're shooting the big 357s. I'd shoot probably maybe 6 to 12. And then when I go to unload, I notice that this whole housing was be would be really really loose and it would kind of almost fall off and then one time eventually it did fall off after I shot it. Now that screw, I can't believe it, but I actually found it. And I had enough of it, so I took red Loctite. I know, red. <laughs> I took red Loctite, soaked it, and fired it back in there, and I haven't had a problem since. It's never come loose. It's It's been perfect. Another thing, I'll keep going, I'll keep going. This uh, cylinder... Um, pin I don't know what you'd call it but I'm gonna call it the cylinder pin um, where you push this tab in and pull it out yeah that does not work for this guy you literally have to take uh, a C clamp puller hook it onto the end of this and push the button at the same time and yank it out because this one is a pain in the ass to get out but then this one this is the newer one it's uh, I find it just comes out like Look at that. What? I bought this and I took it apart after I cleaned it. I said, there's no way. Why does this one come out so freaking easily? And then the other one. <laughs> the other one takes like how much effort to get out? I don't know. I just find it kind of kind of silly. But yeah, no, it's a, it's a, it's a, they're very good shooters. I love these revolvers. They've been. Um, they've been treating me pretty damn good over the years and uh, I can't wait to keep continuing shooting them so if you guys are interested in getting 1873 Cattlemen's go for it they're really nice shooters um, it's, it's along that line of maybe a little bit cheaper and more affordable definitely more affordable than some of the other ones that are out there even though they're becoming more expensive as days go on i've seen them at cabela's for 8 eight fifty. it's getting a little retarded like pretty soon you're gonna need a thousand dollars before you can even look at a gun it's just it's just the way it is it's stupid as hell you can't you can't buy anything in this world any nothing is cheap anymore everything is so overpriced 
I, I know in the States that guys are talking about, oh, well, you could probably get that for like 600 bucks. You guys are fucking lucky then. <laughs> I gotta save up for like a year before I can buy a pistol. Anyways, this is Dusty Tucker signing out. Hopefully you found this information useful or not useful. Then whatever. You'll just listen to me blabbering on. But uh, Dusty Tucker signing out. Like, comment, subscribe. Keep shooting.